Hello Photopilar, Raphael Dabar here. With well over 100 meteors per hour expected at the peak, the Gemini's meteor shower is shaping up to be the most powerful meteor shower in 2025. Even better, the moon will be at 27% and below the horizon for most of the night, which means a darker sky, perfect conditions and an unforgettable show. So yes, the stage is set. In this video, we'll cover how you can plan your Gemini shot, the gear you'll need, and all the camera settings to nail the shot. Ready? Because as always, everything begins with a plan. Okay, let's start planning. Let's go to photo pills, tap on planner. And as always, the first thing you need to do is to place the red pin in the area you want to plan the Gemini. In this case, I have it in Menorca, our beautiful island. Next step is to switch on the Gemini with the shower. So tap on the map settings button here. And I'm gonna switch off the sun layer because I don't need the sun to plan the, the meteor shower. I'm gonna leave the moon layer and then tap on meteor shower layer on the meteor shower layer. And from the meteor shower calendar 2025, choose the Gemini's meteor shower. As you see, we have this blue bar in the Gemini's, which means that's gonna be amazing. So tap on the meteor shower you wanna plan, the Gemini's in this case, and go back to the map. Cool. Now swipe the top panel to the left until you get to the meteor shower panel. And this one, and in this panel, is telling me that the peak uh, for the red pin position in Menorca, the peak is on December 14th at uh, 2.43 a.m. and 113 meters per hour are expected at the peak, which is pretty cool. And as you see, the time bar has been set to December 14th, 2025, and the time at 2.43 a.m., which is the time of the peak. And on the map, you have the position of the radiant, which is this gray line that's moving when I change the time. The thin blue line that's moving is the moon, so you know that you can shoot the meteor shower, the, game, the Gemini's for most of the night until the moon rises. And when the moon rises, well, you can use the moonlight to lead your foreground, to take your foreground shots. So the moon is not always bad. Actually, it's pretty nice to have it low in the sky, leading the foreground from the side. And we can do this for the Gemini's this year. Pretty cool. Okay, so you know, thanks to this gray line that's moving on the map, where the radiant is at all time, you can all this. Tap on the night ER and visualize where the radiant of the Gemini is at all time. You can change the time here and see how the radiant changes, which is amazing. And in the time bar, you see this gray kind of graph, which represents the meteors per hour throughout the night. And as you see, it's going up until it peaks. And then when the moon rises, it drops down because, of course, the light of the moon will wash out a few meters. But still, we have enough uh, intensity to keep shooting and, you know, why not catch more meteors? So, the plan here is to shoot for, for, from, let's say, 7 p.m. to 6 a.m. non-stop to capture as, much, as many meteors as possible and then use the moonlight in our favor to capture our foreground shots. Now let's move the red pin and let's place it near to an interesting subject so we can plan a cool shot. For example, and I think I'll go to here, uh, Favaric as always. I love Favaric. And I'll do a long press on the map to place the red pin. And here we have that. Yeah, Favaric is gonna be a very nice location to photograph the Geminids because the radiant goes above the lighthouse. Uh, if you don't know what the radiant is, the radiant of a meteor shower is that a spot in the sky where meteors appear to originate. You can decide to frame the radiant, you can decide to frame away from the radiant. Uh, usually, if you frame away from the radiant, then meteors might appear a bit longer. Perfect, I think that this shooting spot is pretty cool, so I have my plan here in Favaric to photograph the Gemini's beauty shower with the Favarich Lighthouse. And again, I'll be shooting from, you know, 8, 7 p.m. till dawn. The more time you're shooting, the more meteors you'll capture, that's for sure. And I have missed this composition here with this beautiful lighthouse, the rock formations in front of it, guiding to the lighthouse and the radiant of the lighthouse going above, of the radiant of the meteor shower going above the lighthouse. So yeah, shooting date, of course, is the night that goes from December 13th to December 14th. Huh? That's uh, it. Okay, I think we have the plan. If you wish to keep learning on how to plan meteor showers, please watch this video. And now let's move on. 
To photograph the Geminids, you'll need your camera, of course, a wide-angle lens to include more sky in the photo. Use, for example, a focal length between 10 mm to 35 mm. You know, short focal lengths work great. You also need a sturdy tripod and head, an intervalometer to set the camera to shoot for as much time as possible, and also to avoid to introduce vibrations into the system. Because, as you know, vibrations produce blur images. So, the less you touch the camera, the better. And if your foreground is too dark and you don't want to use the moonlight to lead the foreground, you can always use two LED panels placed far away and a really low power to nicely lead your foreground. Also, when photographing a meteor shower, battery power matters. It's very important. So the question is, how can you let your camera to shoot for hours uh, throughout the night without running out of battery, without running out of power? Well, to get rid of the power problem, we use a power bank connected to the case relay system and connected to a dummy battery for the camera. Not long ago, I made a video on how to build this system. You can watch it here. What else do you need? Ah, yes. If you're shooting in a humid area near a lake or the sea, use a heat strip band to warm up the lens so you prevent moisture condensation on the lens. Avoid moisture condensation at all costs because it produces foggy images. And of course, you don't want that. Finally, another option, another gear you can use is a star tracker to shoot a much longer exposure and catch more detail in the sky. But that's optional. To photograph the Geminids, we'll use the same camera settings we use to photograph the Milky Way. On the big night, arrive at the location at your shooting spot at least one hour before the time you want to start shooting. And set up the gear right at the shooting spot, this is the red pin position. Attach the lens to the camera and set the focal length you want to use, 10mm, 14mm, 24mm. And set the widest aperture you have available, f1.4, f1.8, f2.8. Now, don't be afraid to push the iOS up to 1600, 3200, 6400, depending on the noise performance of your camera. Okay, now it's time to make focus. But where to focus? Well, it depends on your taste. One option is to make focus on the stars, to get them tack sharp. But you'll lose a bit of sharpness in the foreground. Another option is to make focus on your subject. And if your subject falls behind the focal distance, the stars, the meteors, will also appear acceptably sharp in the photo. And you can calculate the focal distance using the hyperfocal table here in Photopill, so tapping in our own hyperfocal table. And here you can choose your camera. I'm gonna set the Nikon Z6, which is a full frame. And on the, on the table, based on the focal length and aperture, you can you get the hyperfocal distance, for example, for an aperture of f2.8, and a focal length of 14 millimeters on a full frame, the hyperfocal distance is 2.33 meters. So you need to make sure that you're focusing at a larger distance than the hyperfocal to get the stars acceptably sharp, to get the meteors acceptably sharp. If you wish to learn and master the hyperfocal distance concept, watch this video. A third option is to focus stack. Take multiple shots of the foreground, focusing at different spots to ensure that the whole foreground is in focus. Then make focus on the star when you start shooting the meteor shower. And finally, stack all the shots in post-processing. Shutter speed. Use the shutter speed you use when you're photographing the Milky Way. And you can calculate the maximum exposure time you can shoot to prevent the stars from trailing using the spot stars calculator here in Photopill. So tap on the spot stars and here you introduce your camera, the Nikon Z6 for example, full frame, your focal length, I have 14 millimeters, the aperture f2.8, declination I'm gonna leave it to zero, which is uh, the default mode. And then for accuracy, let's use default mode. And the table gives us the MPF rule, which is the more accurate, 18 seconds. So if you use 18 seconds as a shutter speed, the stars will be still uh, as dots. In the photo will appear as dots. We don't want trails in our meteor shower shots. The only trails we want are the meteors. Of course, always when you decide the shutter speed, take a test shot and make sure that the stars appear as dots in the photo. White balance. Set the white balance to manual. If you're shooting under a dark sky, use a white balance around 3900 Kelvin to get the natural colors of the stars. And if you're shooting under a light polluted sky, I recommend you to use a white balance around 3400 Kelvin. Great, now it's time to take a test shot and adjust your composition. And check that the stars are not trailing, that the focus is right, and that the exposure is right. Check the history. Also, once again, if you're getting a too dark foreground, you can always use two LED panels to nicely lead your foreground. 
Once everything looks good, set your camera to ball mode and use the intervalometer to set the shutter speed. Usually it's gonna be around 15-20 seconds. And set a time delay between two consecutive shots of one or two seconds. Of course, if your camera cannot work at these speeds, use uh, an interval between two consecutive shots uh, that works with for your camera or SD card. And finally, if it's necessary, adjust the dew heater to your lens to keep it warm and prevent moisture condensation on the lens. Press the shutter release on your intervalometer and let the camera to work for you. It's time to relax and enjoy the show. Now, if you wish to learn more on how to plan and photograph meteor showers, I invite you to download our super detailed meteor shower photography guide and I'll leave a link to the guide in the description of this video and in the first comment below. Download it. And as always, if you like this video, give me a like, subscribe, and I'll see you next Wednesday in another video. And remember, that I have the power to imagine, plan and shoot legendary photos. Bye.